The first frantic callers to reach the RCMP were clear something had crashed in the waters off Shag Harbor, NS. It was around 11 p.m. on the night of October 4, 1967. Most witnesses thought it was a doomed aircraft. Among those who saw the string of flashing lights on that clear, moonless night were three RCMP officers, scores of fishermen and airline pilots flying along the province's rugged southwest coast. But a series of searches turned up nothing. No wreckage. No bodies. No clues as to what really happened that night 50 years ago. A Halifax area man later uncovered a trove of government and police records that would make the Shag Harbor incident Canada's best documented and most intriguing UFO sighting. Hundreds of UFO sightings are reported across Canada every year, but none has the paper trail of Shag Harbor. In a series of RCMP reports and correspondence sent by telex between military officials in Ottawa and Halifax, there are specific references to unidentified flying objects and no attempts were made to explain away what people were reporting. Chris Stiles, the UFO researcher who dug up those documents, remains baffled by the case. To this day, I don't know the absolute answer, but we're still finding things, says Stiles, the author of two books about the Shag Harbor incident. Next week, on the eve of the 50th anniversary, Stiles will be the keynote speaker at the start of the three-day Shag Harbor UFO Festival. After 20-plus years of dogged research, he says he has new evidence to share. It points to an explanation that hardly seems possible, unless you have a sense of what Stiles has uncovered so far. To be sure, the most compelling evidence comes from eyewitnesses like Lori Wiggins, now a 67-year-old former fisherman. There was four lights in a row, and they were going on and off, says Wiggins, at the time a 17-year-old driving home to Shag Harbor with a friend and three young women. One would come on, then two, three, and four, and they'd all be off for a second and come back on again. Sure he was about to witness an airline disaster, Wickens found a phone booth and called the local RCMP detachment. Questions were asked about his sobriety. But he wasn't drunk, and he was sure about what he saw. Several other people called the Mounties that night. They all told same story. Soon afterwards, Wickens was among a dozen or so people gathered at the water's edge, watching in amazement as a glowing, orange sphere, about the size of a city bus, bobbed on the waves about 300 meters from shore. At 11.20 p.m., it slipped beneath the surface without a sound. Three of those at the wharf were Mounties. One of them called the Rescue Coordination Center in Halifax. A Coast Guard cutter was immediately dispatched to conduct a search. Before the ship arrived, volunteer searchers aboard two fishing boats soon spotted a long trail of bubbling, yellow foam on the calm waters, but no wreckage. A squad of Royal Canadian Navy divers later failed to turn up any clues after a three-day scan of the harbour floor, according to official military records. To this day, Wickens has no idea what he saw. All I know is that we saw something, and something came down, he says, adding that he believes the divers pulled something from the water. I can't prove it, but in my opinion they found something. Wickens, now president of the Shag Harbor UFO Society, will take part in a panel discussion Saturday that is expected to include Ralph Lowinger, one of the pilots aboard Pan Am Flight 160, a Boeing 707 cargo aircraft that was at 33,000 feet that same night.